faith is the thread that runs through every page of the Bible, connecting characters, stories, and teachings throughout the ages. From the very beginning, it is presented as an invisible but powerful force that transforms lives, shapes destinies, and accomplishes the impossible. Hebrews chapter 11, 1 defines faith as the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Throughout this itinerary, we will explore what each book of the Bible says about faith, starting from the creation of the world to the final victory in Revelation. The Bible reveals faith in many contexts, in worship, in struggle, in suffering, and even in doubt. This universal theme not only unites the biblical books, but also offers a unique insight into human nature and the relationship with the divine. As we delve into each book, we will see how faith manifests itself in different ways, sometimes as unwavering trust, sometimes as silent hope, but always as the engine of spiritual life. This video not only examines the concept of faith, but also invites you, the viewer, to reflect on your own faith journey. Are we, like Abraham, able to follow an unknown calling? Or like Job, can we keep our faith in the face of adversity? Let's find out how faith is portrayed in each of the 66 books of the Bible and what this means for us today. In the book of Genesis, faith is shown in a powerful way from the very beginning. The story of Abraham, the father of faith, is central. He is called by God to leave his land and his kindred in obedience to a promise of blessing and descendants, even though he didn't know where he was going. Genesis chapter 12, from 1 to 4. His faith is tested in various ways, especially when he is called upon to sacrifice his son, Isaac. This act of extreme faith symbolizes absolute trust in God's purpose, even when we don't understand his ways. In addition to Abraham, Genesis also highlights the faith of Noah, who built an ark at a time when it had never rained, trusting in God's word about the impending flood. And of course, we have the faith of Joseph, who, despite being sold into slavery and unjustly imprisoned, kept his trust in God, being exalted to the second most important position in Egypt to save his family and an entire nation from famine, Genesis 50, 20. In Genesis, faith is presented as a journey, not a straight line, but full of challenges, trials, and choices. It is about trusting God, even without knowing the final outcome. Genesis teaches us that faith is the first step towards a deep and meaningful relationship with the Creator, showing that trust in God can redefine our lives and our destiny. Exodus is a book that reveals faith in its most courageous and communal form. Moses, chosen by God to lead the people of Israel out of slavery in Egypt, faces the challenge of convincing an oppressed people to believe in a promise of freedom. Exodus 3 from 7 to 10. The plagues sent by God to Egypt are demonstrations not only of divine power, but of the need for faith in order for the people to move forward, believing that liberation is possible. The journey through the desert, although full of complaints and doubts, is a great test of faith for the Israelites. They needed to trust that God would provide manna from heaven, Exodus chapter 16, 4, and water from the rock in a hostile environment. This period is marked by miracles that require faith not just at one moment, but as a daily and collective practice. Faith in Exodus is as much an act of rebellion against oppression as it is submission to God's plan. Finally, Exodus shows that faith is often shaped in adversity. When the people reach Mount Sinai, faith takes on a new form, the covenant with God. Here, faith is established as a covenant of mutual trust, where the people are called to follow divine laws, not out of fear, but out of love and recognition of God's power and holiness. Leviticus may seem at first glance to be a book of rules and regulations, but it is in fact a profound expression of faith and worship. The laws given by God to Moses, from dietary laws to sacrifices, were intended to create a holy and separate people, living in complete trust and obedience to God's will. Leviticus chapter 19, 2. 
Faith here is demonstrated in the willingness to follow commandments which in many cases defy human logic, but which establish an intimate connection with the divine. The sacrificial rituals, such as the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, described in Leviticus chapter 16, show that faith is not only an internal belief, but also an external practice. The people of Israel needed to believe that, through obedience to the rites established by God, their sins would be forgiven and they would remain in a restored relationship with Him. Leviticus teaches that faith is not just a matter of thought or feeling, but of concrete actions that reflect trust in God's holiness and justice. In addition, Leviticus emphasizes the holiness of everyday life, from what to eat to how to treat others. Every act of obedience was an act of faith, demonstrating trust that God knew what was best for His people. In this way, Leviticus shows us that faith is lived out both in the great moments of worship and in the daily decisions of life. The book of Numbers is an account of faith tested to the limits. As the people of Israel wander in the desert for 40 years, their faith is constantly challenged by difficulties, rebellions, and uncertainties. However, it is precisely in these moments that true faith manifests itself. When the spies are sent to Canaan and return with a frightening report, only Joshua and Caleb show enough faith to trust God's promise that the land would be conquered, Numbers 14, from 6 to 9. Numbers also presents episodes where a lack of faith has severe consequences. For example, when the people rebel against Moses and God sends poisonous serpents, faith is restored through the symbol of the bronze serpent, which heals those who look at it. Numbers 21 verses 8 and 9. This act is a precursor to salvation by faith, pointing to future redemption through Christ, as interpreted in John 3 verses 14 and 15. In this book we learn that faith is strengthened through testing, the faith that survives the desert is the faith that believes in the promise, even when the way seems impossible. Numbers challenges us to trust God, even in our own deserts, believing that He will provide what we need to reach the promised land. Deuteronomy is a book of renewed faith and covenant between God and the people of Israel. Here, Moses makes a final appeal to the Israelites to remain faithful to God as they enter the promised land. He reminds the people of the miracles and provisions God performed in the desert and exhorts them to keep His commandments as an act of faith and obedience. Deuteronomy 6 from verses 4 to 9. The famous declaration of the Shema, Hear Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, emphasizes the centrality of faith in the one true God. This book teaches that faith is not just a personal experience, but an ongoing choice that must be passed down from generation to generation. Moses instructs the people to teach their children about the wonders God has performed and to live in obedience as a sign of their faith and commitment to the divine covenant. In this way, Deuteronomy shows that faith is both an act of memory and of hope for the future. The message of Deuteronomy resonates with the call to obedience out of love for God, a theme that echoes throughout Scripture. Faith here is portrayed as a commitment renewed daily, a deep bond between God and His people, and a covenant that transcends generations, inviting everyone to trust in the Lord with all their heart, soul, and strength. In the book of Joshua, faith is manifested in action and in the courage to face impossible challenges. Joshua, Moses' successor, is called to lead the people of Israel in the conquest of the promised land. God commands Joshua, Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to give to their fathers. Joshua chapter 1, 6 Joshua's faith is seen in his willingness to follow divine instructions, even when they seem humanly unreasonable, as in the case of marching around the walls of Jericho for seven days. The conquest of Canaan is in itself an act of collective faith. The people must trust in God to win battles that by human logic would be impossible to win. Each victory is a testimony to God's faithfulness and the importance of trusting in His plans, even when we don't understand the means. 
The episode of Achan and his disobedience, Joshua 7, demonstrates that faith also involves holiness and obedience in all aspects of life. Joshua teaches us that faith is not passive, it requires action. It is a faith that moves, that marches, that battles. It is a trust in God's promise that leads us to act boldly on His word, knowing that He is faithful to fulfill what He has promised, regardless of the circumstances. The book of Judges presents a period of great instability and chaos for Israel. Faith in this context is a glimmer of hope in the midst of cycles of disobedience and repentance. Israel repeatedly turns away from God, falling into idolatry, but also finds redemption through God's chosen leaders, the judges, who emerge to deliver the people in moments of crisis. The story of Deborah, the judge and prophetess, illustrates a strong and courageous faith that leads Israel to victory over their oppressors, Judges 4 and 5. However, Judges is also an account of a faith that is often weak and flawed, Gideon, for example, repeatedly asks God for signs before trusting in his word, Judges 6 from 36 to 40. Samson, another judge, is impulsive and often disobeys God's commands, yet his story ends with a final act of faith and repentance, which leads to his own death and the defeat of Israel's enemies. The book of Judges shows us that faith can exist even in the midst of confusion and failure. It is a reminder that God is faithful even when His people are not. Judges highlights the constant need to return to God, demonstrating that genuine faith, however weak, can bring renewal and deliverance. Ruth is a story of faith in God's providence in the midst of desperate circumstances. After the death of her husband and children, Naomi returns to Bethlehem, accompanied by her daughter-in-law Ruth, a Moabite. Despite her foreign background, Ruth demonstrates an unshakable faith by choosing to follow the God of Israel, saying, Your people shall be my people, and your God shall be my God. Ruth chapter 1, 16. This statement is one of the most beautiful examples of faith and commitment in the Bible. Ruth's faith is rewarded when she finds favor in the eyes of Boaz, a rich relative who plays the role of rescuer, Ruth 2 from 2 to 12. The story of Ruth teaches us that faith often manifests itself in simple, everyday actions, such as caring for others, loyalty, and diligence at work. God honors Ruth's faith and places her in the lineage of King David and eventually Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1, 5. Thus, the book of Ruth illustrates how faith can flourish even in difficult times and how God can use our actions of faith to fulfill His greater purposes. The story of Ruth is a reminder that, even when all seems lost, faith in the God of Israel can pave the way for unexpected blessings. The books of 1st and 2nd Samuel narrate Israel's transition from a confederation of tribes to a unified kingdom under the leadership of Saul and later David. Faith is a central theme in these books, especially in the lives of Samuel the prophet and David, the man after God's own heart, 1st Samuel chapter 13 verse 14. Samuel demonstrates faith from childhood, listening to and obeying God's voice, 1 Samuel chapter 3.10, while David exemplifies a dynamic faith both in his victories and in his failures. David is known for his bold faith when he faces the giant Goliath with just a sling and five stones, declaring that the battle belongs to the Lord. However, his faith is also tested in moments of weakness, such as his sin with Bathsheba and the subsequent deep repentance described in Psalm chapter 51. This act of sincere repentance and return to God shows that faith involves recognizing our faults and seeking divine forgiveness. The books of Samuel reveal that faith is a path of ups and downs. It includes great deeds, but also failures and repentance. David's faith, with all its imperfections, reminds us that God looks at the heart and that true faith is reflected both in courage in the face of challenges and humility in the face of sin. The books of 1st and 2nd Kings narrate the rise and fall of kings and kingdoms in Israel and Judah. 
highlighting the constant battle between faith in God and the temptation of idolatry. In this context, faith is often challenged by the deviation of leaders and people to worship foreign gods. However, we find powerful examples of courageous faith, such as the prophet Elijah, who challenges the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, demonstrating that only the God of Israel is worthy of worship. 1 Kings chapter 18 from 36 to 39. While some kings like Hezekiah show faith by trusting in God to protect Jerusalem from the Assyrian armies, 2 Kings chapter 19 from 14 to 19, others like Ahab lead the people into idolatry, facing severe consequences. Faith in these books is often portrayed in contrast to disobedience and apostasy, showing that trusting in God requires a break with religious conformism and the courage to oppose a hostile world. The books of Kings show that faith is a constant choice in the midst of power and politics to remain faithful to the true God. They challenge us to live according to faith, even when the culture around us seeks to divert us from the path of truth, highlighting the importance of leaders who lead the people to faithfulness to God. The books of First and Second Chronicles recount the history of Israel with a special focus on spiritual aspects and faithfulness to God. Written after the Babylonian exile, Chronicles emphasizes the need to renew the people's faith in the divine covenant. It recalls the deeds of David and Solomon, highlighting the building of the temple in Jerusalem as the center of worship and God's presence, 2 Chronicles 6, from 14 to 21. Faith is celebrated here as an inheritance that must be constantly remembered and renewed. The author of Chronicles emphasizes that Israel's prosperity depended on its faithfulness to God and his covenant. The blessings of David's reign and the sins of Solomon are revisited to show how faith or the lack of it impacted the fate of the nation. When kings followed God, the people prospered. When they strayed, they suffered the consequences. This theme echoes the constant call to repent and return to God. Chronicles ends on a hopeful note, encouraging faith in the restoration of Israel and the rebuilding of the temple. These books remind us that faith is not only a remembrance of the past, but also an active hope for the future, inviting God's people to live faithfully in expectation of His redemption. The books of Ezra and Nehemiah portray the return of the Jewish exiles to Jerusalem and the difficult task of rebuilding the city and the temple. Faith here is demonstrated as a collective effort to restore what had been destroyed. Ezra leads the rebuilding of the temple and the restoration of the law of Moses, while Nehemiah organizes the rebuilding of the city walls, facing opposition from both outside and inside, Nehemiah 4, from 1 to 9. Ezra's faith is seen in his dedication to the Word of God and his insistence that the people follow the divine laws in order to rebuild the community on the basis of holiness. Ezra 7.10 Nehemiah, on the other hand, demonstrates a practical and active faith, praying and fasting before starting his mission, but also acting with courage when facing his enemies and inspiring the people to work. These books show us that faith involves both prayer and action. The physical and spiritual rebuilding of Jerusalem is a powerful example that faith can move mountains, or in this case, erect walls and temples, when coupled with the courage and determination to obey God even in times of adversity. The book of Esther highlights faith in a unique way. Without explicit mentions of God's name, the divine presence is felt through the actions and decisions of the characters. Esther, a young Jewish woman who becomes queen of Persia, demonstrates a silent and courageous faith by risking her own life to save her people from an extermination decree. When Mordecai, her uncle, urges her to speak to the king, he says, Who knows, if it wasn't for a moment like this that you came to the position of queen. Esther chapter 4.14 Esther's decision to stand before the king without being asked, which could result in her death, is an act of deep faith. She trusts that God is working, even if invisibly, to protect and save his people. 
Her courage inspires new hope and unity among the Jews, who unite in fasting and prayer, crying out for divine intervention. Esther teaches us that faith is not always openly declared, but can be demonstrated through silent and courageous acts. The book is a powerful reminder that God is present in all circumstances, even when His name is not mentioned, guiding and protecting His people through unexpected ways. The Book of Job is one of the most profound and complex treatises on faith in the midst of suffering. Job, a just and upright man, loses everything he has, his wealth, his children, and his health, in a test of faith conducted in the heavenly spheres, Job 1 from 8 to 12. However, despite his intense pain, Job refuses to curse God and die. Job 2.9, choosing instead to express his agony and questions to God, but without ever completely losing his faith. Job is an example that faith is not the absence of doubt or suffering, but the persistence of a relationship with God in the midst of the most painful circumstances. He questions, laments, cries out for justice, but still recognizes divine sovereignty, saying, I know that my Redeemer lives, Job chapter 19, 25. His story is a testimony that faith is multifaceted and can coexist with pain, confusion, and the desire to understand God's purpose. The end of the book of Job, where God restores his blessings, is not so much a reward for his patience, but a sign that true faith endures the most difficult trials, trusting that God is just and faithful, even when suffering seems incomprehensible. Job teaches us that faith is a journey, not a destination, and that it can grow even in the darkest nights of the soul. The Book of Psalms is a collection of songs, prayers, and poems that express the depth of faith in all its forms, from joyful praise to desperate cries. Many psalms were written by David, who often poured out his heart before God, expressing both his trust and his doubts. Psalm 23, for example, is one of the most famous declarations of faith, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Here, faith is portrayed as a quiet confidence in divine provision and protection. The Psalms reflect a wide range of human emotions and life moments, always bringing up faith as a foundation for dealing with challenges, celebrations, and spiritual struggles. They teach us that faith is not only for moments of victory, but also for those of deep sadness and confusion. In Psalm 51, David demonstrates a repentant faith, crying out for mercy after his sin with Bathsheba. Create in me a pure heart, O God. Psalm 51.10 This book shows us that faith is an ongoing conversation with God, made up of adoration, supplication, and confession. The psalmists invite us to bring all our emotions before God, trusting that He hears and responds, showing that faith is both a celebration of who God is and a cry for His intervention in our lives. Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Songs, often grouped together as wisdom books, present different perspectives on faith in everyday life, in the search for meaning and in the expression of love. Proverbs teaches that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, Proverbs 9 verse 10, emphasizing that faith is at the heart of a wise and successful life. Here, faith manifests itself as a daily practice of choosing the path of justice, integrity, and obedience to God's commandments. Ecclesiastes, on the other hand, explores the search for the meaning of life and the fragility of human existence. The author, traditionally identified as Solomon, reflects on the vanity of many human endeavors and concludes that fearing God and keeping His commandments is the ultimate purpose of every human being. Ecclesiastes 12.13 Faith in Ecclesiastes is an anchoring in God amidst the mystery and uncertainty of life. The Song of Songs, finally, is a love poem which, as well as celebrating romantic love, is seen by many as a metaphor for the relationship between God and His people. Faith here is expressed in the beauty of commitment and covenant, whether in the context of human marriage or in the spiritual relationship with God. These books show us that faith is an integral part of wisdom, the search for meaning, and the experience of true love. 
The book of Isaiah is one of the richest and most complex prophetic books in the Bible, full of visions and promises that point to the coming of a Savior. Isaiah speaks of a Messiah who will come to restore Israel and bring light to the Gentiles. Faith in Isaiah is as much a trust in God's imminent justice as it is a fervent hope in future redemption. He prophecies about the suffering of the servant of the Lord, whose sacrifice will bring healing and salvation to the world, Isaiah 53. Isaiah is also known as the prophet of faith, exhorting the people of Judah to trust in God amid the threat of invasion and destruction. He challenges King Ahaz to trust in the Lord instead of seeking alliances with foreign powers, saying, Unless you believe, you will certainly not stand, Isaiah chapter 7-9. Faith is presented here as absolute trust in God, even in the face of seemingly insurmountable threats and challenges. This book shows us that faith is both an anchor in the present and a hope for the future. Isaiah invites us to trust in God's promises, even when they seem distant or difficult to understand, knowing that he is faithful to fulfill all that he has promised. Jeremiah, known as the Weeping Prophet, lived and prophesied during a period of great political and spiritual turmoil in Judah. He urged the people to repent and turn back to God, announcing the imminent judgment and destruction of Jerusalem because of their disobedience, Jeremiah 7, from 1 to 11. Jeremiah's faith is seen in his willingness to proclaim God's truth, even in the face of persecution, rejection, and personal suffering. Lamentations, traditionally attributed to Jeremiah, expresses the prophet's deep lament over the fall of Jerusalem. However, even in the midst of despair, he finds a spark of hope. The Lord's mercies are the cause of our not being consumed, for his mercies have no end. Lamentations chapter 3, 22. This statement is an expression of faith in the midst of suffering, recognizing that God is the only source of renewal and restoration. These books show us that faith can coexist with lament and suffering. Jeremiah and Lamentations remind us that faith is often deepest in moments of pain and loss, when we trust that, despite the circumstances, God is still in control and is faithful to fulfill His promises of redemption. Ezekiel and Daniel are prophets who lived during the Babylonian exile and whose stories and visions demonstrate unwavering faith in the midst of adversity and judgment. Ezekiel is called to be a watchman for Israel, delivering difficult messages of judgment and restoration. His visions, such as that of the Valley of Dry Bones, Ezekiel 37 from 1 to 14, symbolize faith in the resurrection and restoration of Israel even when all seems lost. Daniel, on the other hand, is an example of courageous faith in a hostile environment. He refuses to compromise his convictions, even in the face of oppressive laws, and is thrown into the den of lions for his loyalty to God, Daniel 6, from 10 to 23. Their apocalyptic visions, such as the Four Kingdoms and the Son of Man, point to the future triumph of God over all the forces of evil. These prophets teach us that faith is more than believing, it is persevering and remaining faithful, even in the midst of persecution, incomprehensible visions and exile. Ezekiel and Daniel remind us that faith not only sustains us, but also allows us to see beyond the immediate circumstances to God's greater purpose in history. The Minor Prophets, a collection of twelve shorter books from Hosea to Malachi, offer a profound reflection on faith in times of crisis, judgment, and the expectation of redemption. These books, although brief, present powerful and direct messages often delivered at times of great political, social, and spiritual tension. Each prophet brings a unique perspective on faith, addressing issues ranging from spiritual infidelity and idolatry to social justice and future restoration. Hosea, for example, uses his own life as a symbol of God's relationship with Israel. Married to Goma, an unfaithful woman, Hosea represents God's unwavering faithfulness in the midst of his people's unfaithfulness. God commands Hosea to love his wife, even after her betrayals, as a symbol of his unfailing love for Israel. 
Faith here is portrayed as constant fidelity, even when the other party breaks the covenant. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you to me in righteousness and in judgment, in loving kindness and in mercies. Hosea chapter 2, 19. It is a faith that believes in the possibility of restoration, even when all seems lost. In Amos, faith is inseparable from social justice. Amos, a shepherd from Tekoa, is called to denounce social injustice and the oppression of the poor in Israel. He cries out, Let judgment run down like waters, and righteousness like a mighty stream. Amos chapter 5, 24. Faith, according to Amos, must be expressed not only in worship, but in concrete practices of justice and righteousness. Amos confronts the false security of a people who trust in religious rituals but neglect justice, showing that true faith must result in actions that reflect God's character. Habakkuk, on the other hand, offers us a glimpse of the faith that perseveres in the midst of suffering and confusion. Faced with the imminent Babylonian invasion, the prophet struggles to understand why God allows evil to prosper. He asks, How long, O Lord, shall I cry out, and you will not hear? Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 2. God's answer challenges Habakkuk to trust, even if he doesn't fully understand. The just shall live by his faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 4. This book teaches us that faith is trusting in God even when His ways are incomprehensible and the world seems unjust. In Joel, faith is called to express itself in genuine repentance. Joel describes a devastating plague of locusts as a sign of God's judgment and calls on the people to turn to God with all their hearts, fasting and weeping. He proclaims the promise that God will restore the years that were consumed by the locust. Joel chapter 2.25. This restitution is a powerful reminder that faith in God includes trust in His willingness to restore what has been lost when repentance is sincere. The minor prophets conclude with Malachi, who warns against spiritual apathy and unfaithfulness in the worship of God, but also offers the promise of the coming of a son of righteousness. Malachi 4.2. Malachi challenges the people to live a genuine faith which rejects hypocrisy and seeks a true relationship with God. Through these books, we learn that faith is an active force that confronts injustice, seeks restoration, trusts in the midst of adversity, and waits for God's final intervention. Matthew's Gospel is written with the purpose of showing that Jesus is the Messiah promised in the Hebrew Scriptures. From the outset, Matthew emphasizes the fulfillment of the messianic prophecies, linking Jesus' genealogy to Abraham and David, two central figures in Israel's history. Faith here is presented as a recognition and acceptance of Jesus as the awaited Messiah, the one who came to save not only Israel, but all of humanity. Matthew highlights episodes that show faith as a response to Jesus' actions, as in the case of the Roman centurion, who asks for his servant to be healed, and when questioned, declares that Jesus only needs to say a word for the healing to take place, Matthew chapter 8, 8. Jesus marvels at the centurion's faith, saying, Truly I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such great faith. Matthew chapter 8, 10. Matthew shows that faith transcends borders and religious barriers, extending to all who recognize Jesus' authority. The gospel also challenges its readers to consider the cost of faith. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus expands the understanding of the law, showing that true faith is not just external obedience, but a transformation of the heart. Faith, according to Matthew, implies following Jesus on a path of renunciation, sacrifice, and total commitment. At the end, Jesus gives the Great Commission, commanding his followers to make disciples of all nations, emphasizing that faith must be lived and proclaimed. The Gospel of Mark, known for its fast pace and brief narratives, presents Jesus in constant motion, performing miracles, preaching, and facing opposition. Faith in this gospel is often put to the test and presented as an active response to Jesus' power and presence. 
From the very beginning, Jesus proclaims, Repent and believe in the gospel. Mark chapter 1, 15, Inviting everyone to a response of faith to his message and ministry. Mark emphasizes faith as something dynamic and developing. When the disciples face a storm at sea and fear for their lives, Jesus rebukes them, asking, Why are you so timid? Do you not yet have faith? Mark chapter 4, verse 40. This question is not just a criticism, but an invitation to grow in faith, to trust in Jesus, even in situations of fear and uncertainty. Mark uses these episodes to challenge his readers to examine their own faith and to ask, how do we react when our faith is tested? Faith in Mark is seen in an exemplary way in the healing of the woman suffering from hemorrhage, who, when she touched the hem of Jesus' cloak, was healed by her faith. Jesus says, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be free from your affliction. Mark chapter 5, 34. This gospel shows us that faith is a deep and active trust in Jesus, which leads us to act, even in despair, believing that he has the power to transform our circumstances. Luke's gospel is written with a strong focus on inclusion, highlighting the message that faith in Jesus Christ is accessible to everyone, regardless of their origin, social status, or religious background. Luke the physician and historian carefully investigates the life and ministry of Jesus, emphasizing his role as savior of all humanity. The angel's announcement at Jesus' birth is clear. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be for all the people. Luke chapter 2, 10. Luke shows that faith often appears in the most unexpected places. The story of the Good Samaritan challenges cultural prejudices, showing that true faith is measured by compassion and justice, not by ethnic origin or religious affiliation. In Jesus' encounter with the sinful woman who anoints his feet with tears, we see a faith that expresses itself in repentance and adoration, to which Jesus replies, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Luke chapter 7.50 the Gospel also highlights the transforming power of faith in unlikely figures, such as Zacchaeus, the tax collector, who, on meeting Jesus, immediately repents and promises to restore what he had defrauded. Luke reinforces that faith is a response to Jesus' love and invitation, which extends to everyone, regardless of their past failings or social status. The Gospel of John is perhaps the most theological of the four Gospels, presenting faith in Jesus Christ as the key to eternal life. From the prologue, John establishes that Jesus is the Word of God, the light of the world, and the source of all life. Faith in John is much more than an intellectual belief. It is a response of the whole being to the encounter with the living Christ. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John chapter 1, 12. John recounts several transformative encounters where faith is the central theme. The story of Nicodemus, John chapter 3, 1 to 21, shows a Pharisee who comes to Jesus at night, seeking to understand what it means to be born again. Jesus explains that faith is not just observing the law, but a new life born of the Spirit. In the encounter with the Samaritan woman at the well, faith leads to a personal revelation of Jesus as the Messiah, and she becomes one of the first evangelists, leading many in her town to believe. John also highlights Jesus' I Am statements, such as I am the bread of life, John 6.35, and I am the resurrection and the life. John chapter 11, 25. These statements are invitations to faith and trust in Jesus as the only source of spiritual life and salvation. John ends with a promise, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed, emphasizing that faith is a blessing for all who accept Christ's invitation to a new and eternal life. The Book of Acts of the Apostles is a vibrant account of the growth of the early church and the spread of the Christian faith from Jerusalem to the Gentile world. It begins with Jesus' promise to send the Holy Spirit, who would empower the disciples to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. 
Acts chapter 1, 8. Faith in this context is a dynamic power that moves Christ's followers to defy cultural, religious, and political boundaries in order to spread the gospel. Acts is full of examples of courageous and bold faith. Peter and John, after healing a crippled man, declare before the Sanhedrin that we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard, Acts chapter 420, even under the threat of imprisonment and death. This book also highlights the conversion of Paul, previously a persecutor of the church, who becomes the most zealous of the apostles. His journey is marked by an unshakable faith that leads him to face shipwrecks, imprisonment and persecution in his mission to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. The book of Acts shows us that faith is an engine for movement, a force that is not content with complacency or comfort. It drives believers to leave their comfort zones, face risks, and expand the frontiers of God's kingdom. The narrative of Acts challenges us to have a faith that not only believes but also acts, mobilizes and multiplies, becoming a living testimony to Christ's power to transform. Paul's letters from Romans to Philemon form the heart of Christian theology on faith. In Romans, Paul lays down the foundations of the Christian faith, emphasizing that the just shall live by faith, Romans chapter 1, 17. He explores justification by faith, affirming that all have sinned and are justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Here, faith is described as a gift from God, a means by which we are reconciled to Him. In his other letters, Paul applies this theology to specific contexts. In Galatians, he confronts the attempt by some to mix faith with works of the law, stating that it was for freedom that Christ set us free, Galatians chapter 5, 1, and that salvation is by faith without the need to add Jewish religious practices. In Ephesians, Paul highlights faith as a shield, Ephesians 6, 16, in the context of spiritual battle. In Philippians, he speaks of the faith that enables us to face all circumstances with joy, saying, I can do all things through him who strengthens me, Philippians 4, 13. These letters show us that faith is not an abstract idea, but a practical reality that shapes our lives, our behavior, and our relationships with others. Paul exhorts his readers to live a faith that works in love, that expresses itself in service, and that stands firm even in adversity. He challenges us to understand that faith is the foundation of the Christian life and the means by which we receive and live out God's promises. The general letters, also known as the Catholic epistles, offer a rich diversity of perspectives on the Christian faith. Each one addresses a particular aspect of the faith, its practical implications, and the challenges faced by the first Christians. Hebrews, for example, offers a profound reflection on the nature of faith, defining it as the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, Hebrews chapter 11, 1. The author of Hebrews takes us through a list of heroes of faith, showing that faith is both perseverance and an unshakable hope in God, even without seeing the immediate results. James, on the other hand, emphasizes that faith to be genuine must be accompanied by works. He argues that faith without works is dead. James chapter 2, 26, stressing that true faith is manifested in concrete actions of justice, mercy, and service to others. Peter, in his letters, exhorts Christians to keep their faith firm in the midst of persecution and suffering, reminding them that the trial of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1, 7. John's letters offer a unique vision of faith as love, emphasizing that whoever loves God must also love his brother, 1 John chapter 4, 20. They emphasize the importance of remaining in the truth and in communion with God. Jude, for his part, warns against false teachers and exhorts believers to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints, Jude 1, 3. 
These letters show us that the Christian faith is multifaceted. It is a deep trust in God, an ethical commitment, perseverance in the midst of difficulties, and an expression of authentic love. The book of Hebrews is a profound theological reflection on faith as the foundation of spiritual life. Written for a community of Jewish Christians who were facing persecution, the author of Hebrews presents Jesus as the perfect high priest and the mediator of a new covenant. He encourages readers to keep their faith firm even in the face of difficulties, pointing to the example of the heroes of faith in chapter 11, who persevered to the end, trusting in God's promises, even without seeing them fulfilled in their entirety. Chapter 11 of Hebrews, often called the Gallery of Faith, highlights figures such as Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Moses, among others, who lived by faith. The author emphasizes that without faith it is impossible to please God, Hebrews chapter 11, 6, showing that faith is essential for a relationship with God. Furthermore, he exhorts Christians to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking steadfastly to Jesus, the author and finisher of faith, Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews teaches us that faith is more than believing a doctrine. It is a spiritual foundation that keeps us firm in all circumstances. It calls us to trust fully in Jesus, our mediator and high priest, who brings us into God's presence with boldness and confidence. The book is an invitation to persevere in faith, knowing that we have a great high priest who intercedes for us and who will complete the work he has begun in our lives. The book of Revelation is a revelation from Jesus Christ about the final events of human history and the consummation of the kingdom of God. Written by the Apostle John while he was in exile on the island of Patmos, Revelation is a message of hope and faith for Christians facing intense persecution. From the outset, John encourages his readers to keep the faith, despite the tribulations, stating that blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Revelation chapter 1, 3. Faith in Revelation is the key to perseverance. Christians are called to resist evil, reject idolatry and injustice, and maintain hope in Christ's final victory. The book depicts a series of dramatic visions, the battle between good and evil, the final judgment, and the ultimate defeat of Satan. In all these visions, the faithful are exhorted to be faithful until death, Revelation chapter 2, 10, promising them a crown of eternal life. In the end, faith is rewarded with the glorious vision of a new Jerusalem, where God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Revelation 21.4. Revelation reminds us that, despite difficulties and persecution, faith in Christ guarantees the final victory. The book calls us to persevere in our faith, to resist evil, and to live with the expectation of Christ's return when all things will be renewed and restored.